Hello, and welcome to The Body VR, an immersive tour through the human body. We are currently inside an arterial, a small strand in a network of blood vessels that spread throughout the body. Let's take a look at the blood's most prominent cell, the red blood cell. Red blood cells, or erythrocytes, take up almost half of the blood's total volume, giving a red color to our blood. Their main function is to transfer oxygen from our lungs to vital parts of our body. Next up are white blood cells, or leukocytes, which take up less than 1% of the blood's total volume. Their main function is to protect our body from unknown viruses. Lastly, let's examine platelets, or thrombocytes, whose main function is to stop bleeding at the site of a damaged blood vessel. On our right, you can see a tear in the blood vessel. Let's investigate. Prepare yourself for miniaturization. currently on the outside of the cell's membrane or skin. There are thousands of receptor proteins on the edge of the cell. Some are tasked with transferring information and others with transferring cargo. Water and oxygen pass freely through the cell's membrane. Larger molecules, like sugar, enter through small pumps. The largest objects, like ourselves, require keys to gain access, preventing unauthorized entry of viruses. Fortunately, I have a counterfeit key that's identical to a real one. Prepare yourself for entry. Phage has pulled us in and we are submerged in the cytoplasm, a gel made mostly of water. The cytoskeleton is made up of a network of adjustable strands that forms the cell structure. There are three different types of strands that make up the cytoskeleton. Microfilaments are the thinnest strand, measuring only 7 nanometers in diameter. Intermediate filaments are made of the protein actin and have a diameter of 10 nanometers. Lastly, microtubules have a diameter of 24 nanometers, which is wide enough to be used for transport. A special type of protein, called kinesin, has the ability to walk along microtubules. It latches onto larger structures, like us, and transports them around the cell. Energy floats around the cytoplasm in the form of ATP, a molecule. ATP binds with kinesin and propels it forward. With each step the kinesin takes, it binds with an ATP molecule and releases an ADP molecule. The kinesin protein is heading straight for the cell's nucleus. Let's tag along for a ride.
we are now approaching the nucleus. The surface of the nucleus has its own membrane, similar to that of the cell. Pores are spread around the surface of the nucleus to allow entry of larger molecules. Protein arms are located around the edge of each pore to bring molecules into the nucleus. Let's head inside. We are now inside the nucleus, the control center of the cell, containing the majority of the cell's DNA. Deoxyribonucleic acid is a molecule that carries our genetic code, which has been evolving for the past three billion years. The DNA also contains instructions for protein synthesis. In the process of transcription, a segment of DNA is copied into RNA, or ribonucleic acid containing a single recipe for protein creation. Prepare yourself for cell exit. We have exited the nucleus and are now floating through the cytoplasm. Surrounding the nucleus is the rough endoplasmic reticulum, or aria, a maze-like structure made of flattened membrane. Studied with ribosomes, the aria maintains a vital role in protein synthesis. Ribosomes link together amino acids following the instructions received from the RNA. The created protein is fed from the ribosome into the RER, which then folds the protein into a specific shape. The protein is then transported in a vesicle made from a portion of the RER's membrane. In the distance, you can see a mitochondria. Mitochondria are free-floating organelles, typically referred to as the powerhouse of the cell. What is that? there's an incoming virus attack headed for the cell. Fortunately, a cloud of antibodies is stationed around the cell to protect it from viruses. The white blood cells consume the viruses as they are highlighted by the antibodies. Together, the antibodies and white blood cells form the front line of our immune system. 
thousands of viruses have made it past the antibodies. The viruses overcome the defenses, and some viruses are able to enter the cell using counterfeit keys. There are too many viruses. It looks like the cell is not going to survive. 